Hello, and welcome back to the Electrify Expo podcast. I'm Matt Teske again here with Joe Boris, and today we've got, again, a lot more fun topics to talk about. Every single week, there's something new going on with e-mobility. We were talking about Ford last week or something we were kind of maybe critiquing a bit. This week, we've got something about Ford that we we're excited to talk about. It's awesome. A lot of new things happening with what's going to happen with production for new EVs, uh, some new cool stuff coming out that's not maybe something that people can buy every day, but it's going to make a huge impact on life. Uh, and and uh, let's face it, you were, uh, you were on Bloomberg. That was the big news, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, well, it's, uh, yeah, it happened. <laughs> so I like what you were saying before about Ford, too. I mean, we, we beat him up last week, and I think deservedly so. You know, we talked a lot about how the Bronco, as much as it's being presented as an innovative kind of thought leader in the SUV space. There's really not that much innovative about it. It's kind of a, you know, the, the word I used was a cynical cash grab. You know, I think I said nostalgia play. I, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's garnering, you know, forward some attention. It's a brand, you know, it's got some heritage to it. And yeah. frankly, it's a good competitor to Jeep. And so I see all the reasons for why they did it. I didn't have been more excited if they had a plug. Yeah, and I think, you know, we're we're in a much better place with Ford this week because the 1,400 horsepower Mach-E Drift Mustang is not only purely electric, it's just so cool. Like, this is the kind of stuff that, even if you're not an enthusiast, you can appreciate this. This, like, crosses boundaries and cultures. I mean, I like to think that, like, a monk on top of a mountain in India could, like, come down from the mist and see this thing, like, passive, and he would go, that is cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it is the definition of it. I mean, I, I clicked and watched it, and I just kept thinking to myself, yeah, this is it. Like, this is, this is what gets people to say, oh, you're, you're dead serious. This is badass. Because there's yeah. still a lot of people that critique Ford for putting the Mustang name on it. And my opinion is the reason why they did that is because they know they have to take their brand into the future. It was a risk for them to put the Mustang on it, but that means they believe in what they're doing with it. And to put out something like this with RTR and, I mean, you know, and Vaughn getting behind the wheel just with this big grin on his face, just like blasting through everything. I, I loved every second of it. I think it was amazing to see. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't feel like there was anything cynical about it. I didn't really feel like it was a business play or a PR play. I mean, it was like, hey, guys that are into EVs are going to love this. Guys that like Mustangs are going to love this. Guys that like drifting in Gymkhana are going to love this. Yeah. And, like, it was just kind of like a feel-good moment. I mean, I, you know, I hesitate to use the word moon landing. <laughs> oh, okay. Slow your roll. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't get me wrong i think it's it's insane and that's the part that i think is most exciting about it. every single ev owners group or you know i mean anything along those lines where it was another brand from ford they were all talking about this yeah every single one of them and they were like oh my god this is insane and then the next step the next comments out of some of these people were i want to see the brand that i am on this owners group for do something similar but it's again awareness is a big deal about the fact that yes evs exist and then the excitement element is what they captured here. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, we know being electric car guys and being enthusiasts and drag racers and stuff, we know how fast these things are. I still think there's that big swath of Americans and uh, America, let's say, that really doesn't get it, that they still think of electric cars as like golf carts or something like that. And they're just now with Tesla starting to realize these things are cool. And now for Ford to come in with something like this, man, that is just awesome. There was a follow-up video of Ken Block getting a chance to get behind the wheel of it. And he was talking, I forget, it was one of the guys from RTR explaining kind of you know, just the engineering behind it. And uh, 1,400 horsepower is one thing, but as he was talking about how they could basically, you know, manipulate the, the seven electric motors they're using, he's like, it could get up to like 4,000 pound feet of torque or something like that. And you hear that and you just kind of go, that, that sounds insane. Did that, does that have more torque than my CRX had? It may be a touch. <laughs> just a smidge. Just a a smidge. <laughs> yeah, basically, if you, if you think, I would like you to go, it probably would just, like, jump in the air and, like, run out from under it. Yeah. <laughs> Applaud to, yeah, applause to Ford for uh, – it's almost like they heard the podcast. They're like, well, they're going to give us some grief about the Bronco. Okay, fine. Well, I will say this. I will say this. I think that they knew somebody in Ford was smart enough to realize – that for all the talk about the Broncos innovation, it really wasn't there. It was more of a smoke and mirrors nostalgia play, as you said. Mm -hmm. And they kind of put this out there like, we can do what we want. We're Ford. Like, it's not that we can't do this electric. It's not that we can't do this hybrid. It's not that we can't do, you know, biofuel. We can do whatever we want. 
and this is really going to happen on our schedule. And I thought that was, you know, whether I agree with that statement or not, I think that that was certainly the message loud and clear. I, I, again, end of the day, I'm super excited to see that Ford did it, but now I'm saying, okay, hey, other brands like Chevy and Volkswagen. And Volkswagen's been playing this space too. They did like that Pikes Peak Pure Electric that was, that was badass. Yes. So, yeah, I would love to spend some time talking about that Volkswagen car. That's that IDR race car yeah. that they took it to the uh, Nürburgring. They've taken it on Pikes Peak. That's a hot car. And I really hope Ford takes this thing to something like Pikes Peak, even just for an exhibition run. Sure. Because I yeah. think to, to kind of marry those two those two kind of slices of Americana, you know, I think would be really awesome. I mean, we're all talking about the Mach-E regardless of how we may or may not feel about the Bronco. And then I also kind of saw a little rumor mill that there is a hybrid version of the Bronco in the works. I don't know if yeah, I, it was a quote from not the, it was, it wasn't a recent quote. It was a quote from, I think like a few years back in relation to the Bronco plans. So I don't know if that's carried forward to what they're planning to do right now, but it certainly was in conversation before. So yeah, speculation wise, there might be something there again. We'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Certainly what didn't come out in the first run of here's what we've done with Bronco, but maybe 12 months from now, we'll be talking about it differently. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm still gonna be talking about this mach E thing. That thing was wild. I just can't, I, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. Uh, July has been a huge month in a lot of ways. And especially in terms of electric cars, we've talked about the electrification of the medium duty, heavy duty, that municipal thing being kind of a big step for that. But Almost symbolically, there have been a couple of other big steps now. Tesla has announced that they're going to be building their new factory in Austin, Texas. Nikola, who we have critiqued on this show for not actually building anything, has actually started building something. Yeah. They've broken the ground on their new factory. And Volkswagen made a major step. They had a factory in Germany that's been building uh, gas and diesel engines for you know, however many decades. They have built their last internal combustion engine there, and they are now going pure electric and that just seems like a big month for evs and also rivian they just announced yesterday that their pilot production line is now up and running in illinois yeah so we've got evidence of a lot of the you know, conversations have all the time of when is this going to start happening uh and, and you can sort of even like softly put lucid into that conversation because they in arizona as well their production facility is in motion they are they are going to be getting things up and running uh this year as well so that's a lot of movement in the direction of what's happening with getting these vehicles from we've thought of something we've designed and prototyped something to we're going to be producing this thing and it feels like there's a sense of urgency now that didn't exist you know uh, frankly before the whole COVID-19 thing kicked off it kind of felt like it was business as usual and oh by the way there's some electric stuff happening where that kind of business as usual doesn't feel so certain anymore and a lot of people are putting a lot more money into these electric projects and, uh, you know, not to uh, belabor the point, but I did predict that Nikola was going to make $22 billion in its IPO. <laughs> Is that, are we actually going to like, that, that, that felt like changing history a bit. But <laughs> if by changing history, you mean artfully editing past bo podcasts. Yes. Uh, it's like, oh, it wasn't right. that much. Was it that much? No, I, well, well, I, you I would have six billion. I don't know what I said. Did I say that? I don't even remember if I said even though it was a billions, but it was, I might have said money. I think I've made a sense. They'll, they'll make well, some money. There will be money involved at some point. <laughs> and this was all. This was in planning. Let's. I mean, let's not. Let's give credit to the companies that are having these announcements. They were working on this. You know, I don't want to call it the EV bubble here, but I mean, my gosh, there's this new. And we've talked about with Nikola. It's like, what's the next unicorn here? We've seen Tesla get critiqued for the last decade about how they're just going to die and fail, and they'll just go away and be left to the dustbin of history. And now their stock is trading at sixteen hundred or so dollars a share that's blowing people's minds. And so everybody else that's been in that space that has that same level of, we build electric vehicle platforms, that level of authenticity, there are now a lot more people taking very seriously what that means. And Volkswagen saying, look what we did with our production facility. That's them saying, we're a part of that game and process. So yeah, I mean, there's a reason to take it seriously because it's not going away and it's only getting better. I think that's, you know, that that's a big statement. Like, we talk about legacy brands a lot on this podcast and um, you know, for one of the major players, if not the major player to kind of say, to, to put out a press in a press release, the words we have made our last internal combustion engine, even if there's that caveat, even if it's, we yeah. have made our last internal combustion engine at the Emron factory or whatever. Right. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I understand it's a big asterisk, but 
the fact that it's there at all, the fact that it's being said at all, yeah. really seemed to me 15 years ago like it, we were never going to get to that point. But credit to Tesla for basically getting other people's attention. I mean, honestly, you, you have to yeah. give that brand credit for that. And, and that was, again, Elon's whole position of like, I want to accelerate other companies to do this. And these other companies have the capability to, to make great vehicles. They have to get in tune with building batteries and software. And Volkswagen, to their credit, they dove in. And they've had some struggles, but they are still working hard at it. And I think yeah. that that's important to see. I think Volkswagen has been really impressive because up until five, six years ago, going into their whole diesel emission scandal, they really didn't seem like they were going to embrace electric. They really seemed like they were pushing this idea of clean diesel. I mean, that was their marketing push was we have clean diesel. We're good for the planet, blue skies. For them to hit the brakes on that, do a 180 and just say, we are invested 100% in this they have come so far and their first cars are just now starting to hit the uh, the market when ford does something like this when general motors does something like this when they hit the brakes on the internal combustor and say look it's obvious we have to go electric i think it's going to be so fast um not so much chrysler not that i don't think chrysler can do it just uh it's not really how they do things they they're <laughs> yeah not really uh, not not, at, least not, at least not yet right uh, GM, I think, is maybe taking a little bit of a safer play there. But to your point, once they get it dialed in, could it be super quick? That's the idea. I still think it's amazingly cool that the GM plant in Lordstown, Ohio, that I used to go to as a kid, as a young car enthusiast with all the J-Body people from the J-Body organization. Um, shout out to the old school J-Body guys. That factory was shuttered and then it got converted over into this is going to be where Workhorse is making their electric truck. And I think that is just kind of incredible. And wasn't that Ford cool? <laughs> <laughs> and man, wasn't that Ford man, so Ford? much better than a press release? Yeah. I, you know, I mean, actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. There's a reason why that's been around forever. It's just because people want to see yeah. the truth. And when you show them something like what Ford did this week, <laughs> yeah, you become a believer. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. Just, um, the engineering director, I guess the technical director at Tesla is now joining Remac. And we've talked about Remac in the episode where we talked about the gripe or the grape the grape. bicycle, the grape. And you know, this is a company that is a, they make hyper cars, they make really badass e-bikes, but that's kind of a, a halo project, right? Like the actual company, what they really do is they are experts in building and manufacturing high power, compact electric motors. And they supply big names. I mean, the Audi e-tron, the Porsche take, uh, Taycan, or whatever you call that thing, those are using Remac motors and they're, they're benefiting from that. There's some Formula E involvement there, especially now with the new uh, Extreme E. I mean, this is a real big deal company. And for them to bring on a guy like this from Tesla, it, is that an announcement that they're gonna start building some cars in volume? He's got the, the high-end performance car pedigree, but his background with Tesla obviously gives him that, that window into, this is how we need to do it from an electrified perspective. But he didn't, join the, he didn't join Rimac from Tesla. He was also at Apple after Tesla. He's had a lens into a lot of different things that are happening from, I honestly would just be blunt about it, from the tech perspective. That is going to be really cool to see what he can bring to the table. And even in the interviews and the, and the quotes that I saw is that you know, he's really excited about what this means they can start to develop in-house for what, you know, what they can really build out as a premier brand. Sky's the limit there. And this could be the superest of supercars to ever be dreamt up ever. This guy has is quite a resume. I wasn't aware he was at Apple. Um, I kind of just kind of skimmed this one, honestly. But I mean, if you want to talk about the last 20 years, you know, like we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the companies that are the prime movers of the 21st century in terms of consumer related technology. I mean, you've got Apple really changing the way and driving the way we consume media, changing the way we consume, you know, certainly music, certainly uh, video, the way that we communicate with each other, the way that we interact with the machines in our house and in our homes. And, you know, we talk about the iPhone, like that kind of stuff seemed like science fiction before Apple made it part of our everyday life. Right. And Tesla is very much the same way where you talk about, you know, while Tesla was building roadsters, people were saying these are still theoretical vehicles. Yeah. While these cars were on the road, just, you know, ripping at drag strips, people were talking about how electric cars will never be fast. I mean, they were building stuff almost a week or two before the criticism of the stuff even came out. Right. For this guy to be at both of those locations, 
you know, I, you almost wonder if, if Remack is going to be, are they going to take a step forward or are they going to be that Henry Ford assembly line manufacturing innovator in the background that makes all this really explode? It's all, I mean, all great questions. And I think the, the fun, the way that I would kind of view Apple and Tesla, kind of how you're defining like the roles they played and how they changed our understanding of just lifestyle and everything else. Apple reframed our understanding of basically technology and communication and how we engage with technology. That's really, I think, what Apple created a new, uh, a new narrative for. Tesla has reframed it around energy. With his, with his background, Chris Port's background at both of those companies, and then you have this technology angle, this energy angle, uh, understanding the value of both, that may be where it's most transformative, in my opinion. It, it, it's certainly a statement of intent from Rimac, and uh, you know, Mate is not someone to be trifled with, so... <laughs> we will see what he does with that. I'm excited uh, to see. It. I'm going to see that whatever they develop out with the Rimac and and the and the C2, their platform that's that's forthcoming. You know, is okay. Cool. Let's put that up against that 1400 horsepower Mustang Mach E. <laughs> let's just let's just have a weekend. <laughs> let's just have a weekend. <laughs> let's yeah, see what yeah. that looks like. <laughs> I think that that'd be a hell of a weekend. So oh, yeah. thanks for listening, guys. We'll, we'll be in next week. And I think next week, what are, there's a couple things I want to talk about. We're going to have a few new vehicle unveilings that. We, can't quite mention yet uh something called an embargo in play <laughs> for those of you who are in the industry but we'll be talking about some cool stuff next week so definitely check it out uh, bye bye that's a wrap for this episode of the electrify podcast be sure to find out more information about electrify expo on facebook instagram twitter and linkedin to get information on all things e-mobility we'll see you next week <laughs>